Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a long overdue Q&A in celebration of 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much if you're one of them and if you're not, it's never too late to press subscribe. Just for some context for the upcoming questions, I am a Yale graduate or soon to be graduate from Yale University and I am a Singaporean international student there. I am graduating with a degree in Bachelor's of Arts Environmental Studies. So someone asked, as an international student, if I'm offered an interview, where will it take place? So I'm not sure this is the case for everyone, but in my experience and also from what I've heard from my friends, the people who interview you are not Yale admissions officers themselves, but they are Yale alumni. And so where your interview takes place depends on where the interviewer is. So my interviewer was a Singaporean alumni and I think he was working overseas while I was in Singapore. And so because of that, um, my interview was online. I think it was over Skype or something. This is the days before Zoom was really a thing. I also know some people who have had their interviews in person, um, usually at like hotel lobbies or in coffee shops, things like that. If you're wondering about what the interview process was like for me, I will leave um, a document that I made for all future international applicants in my description below. It's a free Google Doc that anyone can access. So. Feel free to take a look at that if you're curious. The next question is, what problems did you face in the US as an international student and how did you overcome them? So in my experience, I actually didn't have any huge barriers or difficulties to overcome as an international when I was overseas. Honestly, the support for international students at Yale is great. There's an entire office dedicated for international students where you can go if you have any questions. There's even an orientation for international students. There's also a peer liaison um, support system where they, whereby they link you up with an older international student who acts as kind of like your mentor um, throughout college. You can be as involved or uninvolved as you want in that mentor-mentee relationship. I wasn't really very close to my PL, my PL liaison, because I didn't really find huge difficulties adjusting to Yale and America. I do have to say though that I know that for smaller liberal arts schools where there are not many international students, you might find it a little bit difficult to find support for international students. That is something to definitely bear in mind before you apply or you decide to accept an offer from any of those schools. Something else I will say is that there were still like marked cultural differences between um, other US students and me as a Singaporean. I found it difficult to Kind of connect with people sometimes. Um, it was a very different sense of humor. It was only like in my second, third year whereby um, I started making more US friends because I found them through my extracurriculars. But before that, I definitely wasn't really close to my college community and much closer to my Singaporean friends. Even now, honestly, I think my closest friends are still my Singaporean friends with like two or three exceptions. Can you name some good extracurriculars to do from home that don't cost much but can grab the attention of big schools? Hmm. I understand that some of you do have a lot of challenges finding groups around you that really resonate with your interests. In that case, I would recommend that you find a way to be entrep entrepreneurial and Either create your own club, own organization, find like-minded people and get them to join you or you can invest your time and effort into a skill that you can um, do on your own at home. The challenge with the latter option, which is doing an individual activity, is kind of proving your ability, proving that you put in a lot of time into this because, I mean, obviously if you're working with an organization or you started or founded a new club, you have like records for that, right? Like you have people who are able to speak on your behalf. You have consciously touched the lives of multiple people through your organization's mission or aim. Um, but for an individual project, it's a lot harder to do that. What you want to do is try to think of ways that you can distinguish yourself from every other person, every other applicant to the school that has the same hobby. So for example, there can be many applicants who are interested in doing yoga and do yoga on their own at home. But maybe the way that you can distinguish yourself is to scale it up. 
and take yoga to start offering free community classes for yoga. Start offering elderly friendly yoga classes at an old folks home, for example. If you really like dogs, you can start a dog sitting business. There are many ways you can take your hobby and apply it to a larger scale situation to really show the school that you're applying to that you've really invested time and effort to build your expertise and allow it to do good for those around you. So the next question is, during your college life, have you ever regretted not taking a risk or trying something new? So this is a great question. It's something that I'm going to be diving deeper into in my next video, which is going to be about the mistakes um, that I think I made at Yale and what I would have done differently. So if you're interested in seeing that, definitely subscribe. But to answer your question, my short answer to that would be yes and no. I would say yes, I regret not taking more risks because we can always take more risks, we can always try new things and especially this year at Yale and US, my senior year, I've really not been getting involved in many new activities. I'm very much within my comfort zone. I do wish that I went for events that I wasn't as familiar with and tried more new things here at Yale and US. But I would also say no because I think I made the most of the time that I had, especially at Yale. I definitely tried many many new things like I joined the frisbee team even though I never played frisbee before college. I co-founded two environmental clubs at Yale and they still exist right now and are doing well which I'm very proud of. I traveled solo to Canada and Mexico. I tried online dating. Like I tried a lot of things that put me out of my comfort zone and found that I enjoyed a lot of them. So I'm very proud of everything that I've done and how much growth I've seen in the past four years. So my answer to that is yes and no, but I'm going to go more in depth into other regrets that I had in my next video. Someone asked if I have any tips for sophomores or second year students. I'm also going to go in depth into this in the next video. The one takeaway that I will leave for you guys as a tidbit for the next video is whenever you're trying to make a decision between two things like whether to stay at home to study or go out and watch that play or whether you should join the frisbee team that you've never tried before or tr join the debate team that you're familiar with and have done for like 10 years ask yourself this question what would you regret not doing five years later I know sometimes it's very difficult to have the answer to this question because we don't really know how us five years from now is going to think but usually we have a good instinctual reaction to the answer to the question if you ask yourself that question like what would i regret it really helps put things into perspective because it's like i'm making decisions that are best for your long-term self instead of having instant gratification and just doing whatever you feel like doing in the meantime. So it is quite funny because everyone's very different, right? Like for me, my first year, I was studying like all the time, even though I really didn't need to. But I was studying like the entire week and not allowing myself to go out and like um, make friends and have fun and, and watch plays and attend like shows, right? When that was what would have made my life so much more fun. I think I was very hard on myself. But then on the other hand, you have people who like just go out and party um, and never study. Like There needs to be a balance. You need to be able to find that balance. I think asking yourself that question, like what would I regret in five years, really helps you to make decisions um, for the future you, for your long-term satisfaction versus like instant gratification. The other tips I will leave for the next video. Any advice for future transfer students? Okay, before I answer this question, I must warn you that the transfer um, application process is one of the most difficult processes that you have um, I want to say in the whole country because according to Google Yale has like a 2% acceptance rate for transfer students which is like one third of the regular acceptance rate. I personally know very competent individuals who applied and didn't get in. Usually I think the people who get in are like um, athletes or have a lot of achievements that make them really stand out as compared to the other applicants. So be aware of that and make sure to tailor your expectations before applying. I don't have that much experience with transfer student application tips, but I consulted my trusty friend Google and this is what I found. Firstly, a transfer candidate's academic strength 
is Yale's first consideration. An applicant for transfer admission should have an outstanding academic record. So if you're in the US, the average GPA of an admitted transfer student is usually 3.8 out of 4 and above. Transfer students should have a particularly compelling and well-defined academic reasons for studying at Yale and they should explain in their essays how studying at Yale would give them an educational opportunity particular to their interests that could be experienced nowhere else. Next tip, if you want to transfer, work hard and be engaged in the classroom because a key part of a successful transfer application is stellar and glowing letters of recommendation. So in order to do that, you need to have really great existing relationships with your current teachers. Don't complain about your current school in your application. Instead, show how you positively contribute to Yale and how you will move forward. This is my personal tip, but I would highly suggest that you guys think over um, why you want to apply, like whether it's worth applying. Are you chasing the brand name of Yale? Or is there genuinely an academic uh, pathway that you really want to pursue in Yale? You 100% do not need Yale to craft a life that you love. Uh, even if you don't go to Yale, you can do amazing, amazing things with your schooling life and your career life. So give that a thought. Um, yeah, and just be sure to be applying for the right reasons. Someone asked about tips for O and A level students. Uh, I don't remember much about O and A levels except that I really studied a lot, <laughs> like studied all the time. I just saw it as a pathway to uni um, to college and yeah i was just working a hell lot i would say though make time for things that are not academic in nature um, go out have fun invest in your hobbies participate in volunteering events definitely definitely take care of your health like i think when you get to college and beyond you will realize that your life can be consumed by your work but it, you should never let it be be sure to invest in those relationships, invest in your health. Like these things deserve time too and consideration. I think the second thing I would say for O and A level students is please don't compare yourself. I know it's so difficult because we are all graded according to this like national benchmark. We are all comparing ourselves to each other all the time, but I don't think that's a very productive way of approaching education in general. It sucks that O and A levels forces you to do that, but just try and focus on your own path. Focus on how you've improved instead of how you compare with someone else. So the next question is on my graduation plans. Um, I'm going to be spending the next three months of the summer resting in Singapore. And then after that, I'm going to Vietnam. Um, I'm going to be working there for one year before coming back to Singapore after. How's learning Japanese going? What are some resources you used to learn? Okay, so I haven't been learning Japanese since the video that I filmed over here. Um, yeah, and that's because I want to focus more on Vietnamese. But when I was studying Japanese, there are some YouTubers and Instagrammers that I used to follow for Japanese study inspiration and I will leave them either on the screen or down in the description below. So you can check them out for much better content for Japanese inspiration than, than you can for me. How to minimize the use of cell phones? Quick tips, number one, delete your most used social media apps. Number two, put your phone in a different place from where you are working or you're studying. Third tip is very similar, turn your phone onto airplane mode when you go to bed and put it in a different room. Um, try not to touch it until you're done washing up, getting grounded, you know, doing whatever morning routine that you have. And preferably, don't turn it on until you've completed your first task of the day. This has really helped me so much to be more productive in the mornings. But honestly, I really think when it comes down to it, it's deleting the social media apps. Like, that's the time sucker, right? So someone asks, what motivates you to achieve something? Okay, so this depends on what it is. If it is something that I have to do, like studying, sometimes, you know, you just get it done. Um, <laughs> I think how I try to force myself to do things is I remind myself why I'm doing it for the long haul is really just because I'm striving towards a better life you know like I, I'm saying no to instant gratification because I know that future me uh, will thank me 
for the hard work that I'm putting in now. For example, like when I was in secondary school in JC, did I always enjoy studying? No, but I knew that I needed to do that in order to get to a good college, which I did do. That's for things like studies. For things that are voluntary, right? Like things like learning languages, um, exercise, getting better at yoga or whatever other skill. Um, these are things I work towards because I enjoy challenging myself. I enjoy pushing my own boundaries. I enjoy the feeling of growing. I just really think that it's amazing to see that we as humans can really achieve whatever we set our mind to. And if you don't believe that, I'm here to remind you that that's true. Life is too short to spend wasting it away, you know, like I want to be able to live multiple lifetimes to master or at least try out many different skill sets. I think it's a waste of the life that I've been given to not take full advantage of it. Okay, someone asked, how can I become a more creative person? Okay, quick tips, capture your ideas. I think a lot of the time if you have many ideas, but just never write them down. So definitely if you have something that occurs to you, just write it down. Second thing is to actually act upon your ideas. Um, yeah, just go for it, you know? Thirdly is to let yourself be bored. I think boredom is so important um, for letting your mind just process things. I find that I'm always the most creative when I'm just swimming or going for a walk because those are the times when I have downtime to just process everything. In fact, all of my common app application essay ideas came to me when I was in the swimming pool and also a lot of my YouTube ideas come from swimming as well. <laughs> Final tip for being a more creative person is to like follow your curiosities and don't be afraid of being a beginner. Um, if you want to try out sketching or singing or dancing, just try it. In this day and age, the internet allows us to learn anything, which I think is remarkable. So just try it out. Get started today or tomorrow, you know, and keep working at it if you enjoy it and you can always drop it if you don't. A key part of being a creative person is just experimenting, is, tr is trying new things that come to you and seeing what sticks and what doesn't. Do you compare yourself with others? How do you overcome it when it happens? So usually I don't, um, but admittedly I've been doing so a lot more now in this year for some reason. I think it could be because I'm graduating and I'm a senior, but it still feels like I don't really know what I'm doing with my life or where I'm going. So it's easy to compare yourself with other people who seem to have it all figured out. But my tips would be to first of all, remind yourself that you never know someone's entire story. Someone might seem like they have it all together, like they have it all, but inside they could be really stressed. They might not have good relationships. They might not be healthy. They might be struggling with a lot of things. First thing is having the awareness. Second thing is to take space from social media. I think personally, social media is really a comparison trap. In fact, I didn't have Instagram for the past three years of my college life, which is what I think made me the most blissfully unaware. Frankly, you don't need to know what everyone else is doing. I can tell you that for a fact, your life will go on. In fact, it's even better when you don't fixate on anyone else's life but your own. This tip goes along the third tip, which is to like identify your triggers. Um, is are there certain social media platforms that trigger you? Is talking to a certain person stressing you out? And if it's and if that's the case, then you don't have to do either of those things. Cut those things out of your life if they're not bringing you joy. Journal. Figure out why you're feeling this way. Usually, it stems from feelings of insecurity, um, of not being enough in some way, not smart enough, not. Um, successful enough, not pretty enough, right? But journaling allows you to kind of sit down and objectively identify the ways that you can be um, better or you can improve, right? And finally, I would say exercise. Like go for a walk, swim, dance, whatever you enjoy because firstly, the endorphins will make you feel happy and secondly, exercise is great because it just forces you to drop in your body to like focus on what you're doing in the moment instead of like thinking about a billion and one things. Big question here, what is your purpose in life? <sighs> Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think earlier in my life, it was very focused on doing environmental work in some form or another, which is what drove me to study at Yale because I wanted to do environmental studies and I wanted to do it there. It also drove me to do all my environmental volunteering before uni. But now, honestly, I don't know what it is. I think I still definitely want to work in the environmental space. I just don't know in what area. And going to college made me realize that just so many pathways I could take with my life. Going to college also made me realize that, you know, 
the things that have meaning to me in life is more than just my work, right? I also want to have good relationships, be healthy. Um, Oops, I didn't manage to finish that before my camera died. But basically what I'm trying to say is that I've come to think that my purpose is just to live life to the fullest. And I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that means to me.